Okay, so today's mission, we're gonna go to WWVB. Um, it is a radio station that uh, doesn't play any radio. So if you've ever had one of those atomic clocks, um, this is what sets it. There's two in the US. Uh, there's this one here in Fort Collins, and there's one in Hawaii. And this is the one that sets all of those atomic clocks uh, with the audio that you heard at the very beginning. And it's actually right over here. And we're gonna go fly over it. So this is it right here, WWVB. Um, like I said, if you have an atomic clock, this is what sets it. Uh, it's a little less common nowadays just because of the internet. So basically everything gets set off of uh, an atom you know, off of the internet's clock. Um, which is actually set in Boulder, believe it or not. Uh, just kind of off that way. Um, but what this does is it sends out a bunch of different radio signals that your clock can find. Um, and then it automatically sets your clock based on that radio signal. So pretty cool. So they've got a bunch of antennas here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and they're all different uh, wavelengths. Sadly enough, in uh, the 2019 fiscal year budget, this might actually get shut down, which would kind of suck. Um, you know, a cool little piece of history. Uh, I can't remember the date that it was put into service. I'll put it right here. Uh, but um, it's been here for a long time. They actually have two atomic clocks in there. Uh, I want to say they're hydrogen clocks. And uh, that keeps everything set really close. You would think they would pipe it in from uh, F1, which is the one in Boulder, but they don't, they have their own. There it is, WWVB. Pretty cool. Make sure I don't slam into any wires or anything. I'm a couple hundred feet above the tops of the towers, but still wanna make sure I'm careful here. So yeah, there it is, WWVB. Let's get one more good look at it. So there's one more cool thing I thought we should go see today. That's the Budweiser Breweries right over here. So let's uh, fly over there and see what we can see. Okay, so this is kind of cool right out in front of us. You can kind of see the remnants of a corn maze. Um, this is the pumpkin patch that we go to every year. I'm pretty sure it's this field right here. Uh, and you can kind of see the corn maze that they made this year. I'm gonna fly right over it. There it is, the corn maze and the pumpkin patch. It's pretty cool. What if it's supposed to look like something? I can't really tell. But yeah, you can totally see the remnants of it. And right there is uh, Budweiser. So let's go fly around that. So here you go. Here's the Budweiser Brewery. It's one of, I think, four or five. I've got a bunch of buddies who work here. But I bet you they've never seen it from this perspective.
right, so time to head home. Pull the trims up and get at it. All right, so I think this is probably a good time to just talk about seat of your pants flying. It's like right now I can't see the field that I'm supposed to land on, right? But I know a couple things. Right there is WWVB, which we saw earlier, right? I know that this right here, this big road is I-25, and I know that this little town right here is Windsor. No, Wellington, sorry. Um, so based on that, I kind of know that my field is like right in the middle of where I'm going. I don't know exactly where it is, but as I get closer and closer, I should start seeing stuff that I under, like realize and recognize more and more. So that's kind of seat of your pants flying. It's just understanding like basic direction of which way you should go. And then once you're going that direction, picking out landmarks and things that you know. So like another thing that I know, I know that my, the road that I take to fly is right here. Um, where that road turns, this is, uh, I forget the name of the road, but this road right here turns. I go straight and then right. So I know that I must be a mile or two or five uh, coming up to just kind of straight in front of me. Again, as I get closer, I'll start picking out other landmarks that I know. It's also really important to continue to scan for other air traffic. So about every minute or so, I look out at the horizon and just kind of scan to make sure nothing else is on my level. Um, we have to avoid everything else. And I know uh, back that way, there's an airport, Fort Collins Loveland Airport, that uh, that's pretty high traffic. And I know I'm, I'm a little lower than the normal traffic pattern right now, um, but you always want to be careful about it. So that's another little seat of your pants flying thing. The last thing I'll say is I could go straight over this lake. Um, but I don't have any flotation, and that's uh, half ice, half lake, and if I went in there, I'd probably be dead. So the big thing is just making sure that you're always probably, you know, like I want to be double to triple my glide slope um, to, you know, at least the shore and definitely to a field. And if you notice, I just got a bunch of chop there. That's because I'm over top of this, and the air is different, so... Probably what I'm getting is I'm getting the warmer air coming off of the land here. And that's bumping me up and down a little bit. Not much, maybe like a two um, on the zero to 10 scale, but uh, still worth, um, you know, making sure I'm high enough to, to not die. <laughs> All right, so um, I can actually see my field route now. It's right in front of me, uh, all highlighted on the, on the video. But that's the field I'm going to. I know the shape of it, and I know kind of what's around it. And there's a big cornfield right next to it and whatnot. So now I know where I am. Um, and again, so all I did was just find stuff I knew and keep flying towards it until I could, uh, could find the field. And it's actually a good thing because my fingers are starting to get cold. So I, uh, I'll check back in when we're about ready to land. All right, so we're gonna try spot landing. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. We might be high, but I think we might be right on. Uh, it kind of depends on wind direction. I'm assuming it's still north to south. Um, and if it is, I think I'm gonna be a little low, but we'll see. The plan is to kind of come in over top of the ditch there, make a nice big right hook turn and see if I can't put it down in the perfect spot. <laughs> and we screwed it up. Well, okay, so I could still make this spot landing work. Um, but I don't want to walk that far. So...
Beautiful. Ah, oh, right by the car. I don't have to walk far. That was a really good flight. That was easily my longest flight ever. Um, lots of fun. I felt like I made good piloting decisions. I, uh, you know, pushed myself a tiny bit in the sense that it was a little more choppy than I'm used to, but all in all, I think a good flight. So let's get packed up and go home. Okay. So that was a fun flight. Um, it was good to get up. It was two days in a row now. Uh, this was kind of an interesting one because it's like almost 11.30 when I landed, um, which, uh, yeah, should have been a little bumpier than it was. But as you can see, we've got a nice big gray cloud layer over almost all the sky. So it wasn't too bad. Um, I'm glad I got out in it. Kind of gives me an idea of what I can expect if I uh, go flying when it's um, cloudy. So, all right, well, I think I'm gonna cap this one here. Uh, like it, cause you know you liked it. Subscribe and keep coming back. Thanks. Hey!